Dr. Rick Wright, and I will be the master of ceremonies for our great flag raising ceremonies here at the historic city hall of the city of Syracuse, New York, a city that has an incredible background in the underground movement, the abolitionist movement, and of course the foundation for Juneteenth and Juneteenth celebrations here in the United States of America, which has been held throughout the entire month of June in this year, 2014. Juneteenth represents African-American freedom here in the United States of America. We must still remember that African-Americans came to the United States of America as slaves. And we first came upon these shores. Our ancestors came here in 1619 and landed on the shores of the James River, Jamestown, Virginia, 1619. And this is the year 2014. And of course, again, I repeat, our ancestors, African Americans, were brought to America enslaved. And of course, it took a civil war to settle the question and of course, as we stand here on Washington Street this morning, I want y'all to remember that the trains, the mainline train of the New York Central Railroad ran right in front of City Hall. And also, let's never forget that President Abraham Lincoln, on his way to Washington, D.C., crossed right in front of where we are standing on this, the 13th of June, 2014. And then when President Lincoln was assassinated after the great American Civil War that was fought to hopefully settle the question of slavery here in the United States of America, President Lincoln's funeral train came right in front of us down Washington Street and where the federal building stands today, President Lincoln's funeral train stopped at around 11 o'clock at night. And the citizens of Syracuse had that opportunity to see the great emancipator, President Abraham Lincoln. Let's also not forget the Compromise of 1850, which was a compromise in Congress, which basically was concerned with the development of the United States of America, the expansion of the United States of America, making a decision of what states would come in as slave states and states that would come in as free states during the 18th century. A compromise was put together and the compromise said that okay these states can be free like California and others but we want to have the authorization to come north to take escaped slaves back south into slavery. And one of the biggest tests happened right here in Syracuse, New York with the Jerry Rescue October 1st, 1850, where William Henry, slave from Missouri, who had settled here in Syracuse, and the federal marshals came and arrested him, and of course, jailed him. Jail that was located right where Clinton Square is there, along the shores of the Erie Canal. Well, the citizens of Syracuse came to the rescue, and of course, Bishop Jermaine Wesley Logan of the African Methodist Episcopal Zion Church, Reverend Samuel May, all came to the rescue of William Henry, better known as Jerry. Let's not forget that Frederick Douglass and Harriet Tubman, great historical legacy, all right here in central New York and Syracuse. So we celebrate Juneteenth today. General Granger, federal forces, federal troops, came ashore in 1865 June in Galveston, Texas. And of course they came ashore and the African Americans who were enslaved did not realize that President Abraham Lincoln had signed an Emancipation Proclamation indicating that they were free. They absolutely enjoy, rejoice, and went ballistic not realizing that they were free. So, Juneteenth, which is celebrated this whole month, we're celebrating it this weekend here in Syracuse, New York. And of course, the Juneteenth celebrations tomorrow will be happening in Jubilee Park on South Avenue. Uh, the committee wanted me to let you know that they're working on a whole new strategy. Where we're going to get the whole city of Syracuse and all of our great historic places involved in the up and coming years. So, I've talked enough, haven't I? But welcome again to everybody.
this morning. And of course, at this time, let me bring to our great podium in front of City Hall here in wonderful downtown Syracuse, where again, the wealth of America passed right in front of City Hall with the main line of the New York Central Railroad, I think it was probably called that, and of course the Erie Canal right behind. Well, our great leader of the great city of Syracuse, New York, Mayor Stephanie Miner, Mayor. Thank you all very much. It's a pleasure to be here once again, and uh, it is such an honor to be here to announce the formal beginnings of our Juneteenth Festival. It's a time when we remember how much progress our country has made, but we only make that progress through struggle. And it's important to remember that nothing worth accomplishing is ever easy, and nothing worth accomplishing is ever done alone. So together, we celebrate Juneteenth and reflect on the progress that we have made as a community and we have made as a country, being very cognizant of the fact that there is much that we still have to do. And it's a we, not a me, not a you, not an I, it's a we. So thank you very much to all of the organizers who make sure that this event or multiple events uh, always come off well. The planning for Juneteenth starts the day after it ends. And we, those of us who are not as involved in the planning as others, uh, are very thankful that you do this for all of us. And it's a, I want to invite the entire community to come out. Tomorrow is going to be a beautiful day. There'll be a great parade and a lot of events. It's a, uh, it's a great time for all of us to come together. So thank you, uh, Mr. Wright, as always. And we look forward to seeing you tomorrow as well. Our great mayor. I know a lot of you have gone to Washington, D.C. If you haven't gone to Washington, you must make a trip to Washington, D.C., the city on the Potomac River. I got down to Washington quite a bit and went down about a year or so ago. Took my son, Reuben Wright III, down to show him D.C. And I used to work in Washington at NBC Radio and also on faculty at Howard University. But there's something magnificent about the capital of the United States. Well, I never forget driving into Washington, D.C. late at night, made the run off of the Washington Beltway, you know, Pennsylvania Avenue, and you're coming up, man, out through uh, southeast Washington, and at night there's the Capitol Dome. Man, it is impressive. And what's really impressive is when you got a member of the family who's in that building making decisions about what's going to happen here in the United States of America. These are challenging times right now. We have some things that I'm really concerned about since this is Juneteenth, things like voter suppression and others. But we got a good family member who's uh, walking the halls of Congress. I love him so, by the way, the first time I met him, we had Juneteenth celebrations, Kenny D's, over at Clinton Square. And here comes a guy walks up to the podium. He says, hey, Dr. Rick, my name is Dan Maffei. Huh? Oh, hold on. is it Dan coming up here next? Yeah. Oh, Dan. Oh, Dan. Please. Come up, Dan. Boy, I'm telling you, I love knowing, you know, this is great. Fantastic. How you doing, Dan? Welcome. Hey, Dan, I was looking for you at the Capitol that night. So. I, I think I was here. Uh, you were here, right? Yeah. Dan McFay, everybody. Well, I want to thank uh, uh, everybody who helped put this together, particularly Dwayne Owens and Kevin Henry. I want to thank uh, the great mayor of the city of Syracuse, Stephanie Miner, who you just heard from, and uh, also uh, President of the Common Council, Van Robinson, and Leader Helen Hudson, and all the council for welcoming us. Uh, because, uh, Dr. Wright, while I really appreciate that introduction, and uh, the, the United States Capitol is a wonderful building, I'm very, very happy, more happy than ever, to be in front of Syracuse City Hall today, which is also a beautiful building with beautiful people in front of it. Uh, this is a, Juneteenth is an important day, but it is a bittersweet day. It's a day when we reflect on the national sin of slavery, the original sin of our country, and the years of segregation that followed even the official, the formal emancipation. But it's an also day when we come together in friendship to celebrate the end of slavery and to honor African American culture. And as Rick Wright told you so eloquently, we are at the center of history when it comes to the Underground Railroad, and the fight uh, for racial equality in this country for 
years and years and years. And uh, I've been particularly involved in this in Auburn nearby where we've been trying to get a national park to honor Harriet Tubman. And uh, Harriet Tubman, courage uh, sets an example, not just for her own time, but for us in our time. And what she always said when she was trying to lead uh, people to freedom was keep going, keep going, keep going. And indeed, there's still so much injustice in our world. There is still racism. There is still hatred. But there is also love. And there is also brotherhood. And we can overcome those evil forces with those good forces. Martin Luther King said that the arc of the moral universe is long, but it bends towards justice. My brothers and sisters, we bend it. We have to be there to bend it. And by celebrating and recognizing Juneteenth, and by rededicating ourselves to racial equality and justice for all, we help bend that to justice. Thank you very much. All you need is enough votes, folks. Congressman Dan Maffei. Hey, Chris Folk, how are you doing this morning? Members of the press are here. To members of the press, Juneteenth ancestral dinner will take place this evening in our wonderful atrium, right? All right. Also, tomorrow, Juneteenth celebrations, big parade tomorrow. The weather's going to be fantastic, and we'll have a whole lot of food and fun at Jubilee Park, South Avenue. All right. And of course, uh, y'all got all this digital communications today. I don't need to say anything else, right, Kenny? Your Power 620 and Clear Channel Radio. Okay, a great, incredible song that I had to learn when I was in the seventh grade at Harold L. Trigg Elementary School in Elizabeth City, North Carolina, was a poem that was written by Dr. James Weldon Johnson, and we now have put it into words of music, and it is the national anthem of the African-American ancestry, Lift Every Voice and Sing. Now the Bowens, look at him. Uh, these two are really incredible. They church people and everything. Come on, Miss Bowens. She's gonna give us a nice, um, she's got an incredible first name there. But I'll call her Miss Bowens. Give her the real attributes of life and musical arts. Our national anthem of the African-American community. Lift every voice and sing Till earth and heaven ring Ring with the harmonies of liberty Let our rejoicing rise High as the listening skies let it resound loud as the rolling sea. Sing a song full of the faith that the dark past has taught us. Sing a song full of the hope that the present has brought us. Facing Victory is one. God of our weary years, God of our silent tears, Thou who has brought us thus far on the way, Thou who has by Thy might. Keep us forever in the path we pray. Lest our feet stray from the places our God where we met thee. Lest our hearts drunk with the wine of the world we forget shadowed beneath thy hand may we 
forever stand true to our God, true to our native land. Thank you. Worship leader from the Promised Land Church here in Syracuse. God bless you there. Well, my seventh grade teacher didn't know. <laughs> I know why she made me learn the song. I was going to be standing in front of City Hall here on the 2014th day of June 13th, June T. Ladies and gentlemen, Albany is in the house. Albany, New York, the capital of the great state of New York, the Empire State. Senator Valesky, are we going to bring this baby back to the Empire State? Absolutely. Thank you, Dr. Rick. You can't find a better MC for any event than Dr. Rick. I'm happy to be here and join my colleagues in government uh, and community leaders from across Syracuse and Central New York to kick off this Juneteenth celebration. And you know, uh, Juneteenth is just that. It's a celebration of African American culture. It's also a reminder of the challenges and sacrifices uh, that Africans, uh, African Americans have made. But it's also, for me, a time to reflect and redouble my efforts at the state capitol and I know Congressman Maffei does this as well as at the national capitol in Washington to ensure to ensure that the legislative decisions that we make in Albany and Washington reflect continually on the words of our Pledge of Allegiance that in fact liberty and justice is for all and today in 2014 we have as much work as we ever have to ensure that those words remain true for all American citizens. Thank you for being here today. Thank you very much, Dave. We call him Dave because we remember the family here from Albany. Don't forget Syracuse. We got everything we need here in Syracuse. Become a great city, a fantastic city, wonderful city, wonderful people. Ladies and gentlemen, the vice president of the Juneteenth celebration for the year 2014 is Mr. Kevin Henry. Kevin. Thank you. For those of you who don't know, the city of Syracuse hosts one of the largest Juneteenth festivals in the country. Um, however, we couldn't do that without the support of Mayor Miner and the city of Syracuse. Um, I want to thank Commissioner Bea Muhammad because I know I drive him crazy at this time of year, him and Mary Beth, but again, Thanks for all that you do for us. I want everyone to know that next year, 2015, will be the 150th year of the Juneteenth celebration. And we organize the festival, but the festival belongs to the community. Our doors are wide open for anyone who would like to uh, become a committee member or volunteer to help us because we plan on that being a, a rather large festival next year. And it will be back in the historical Clinton Square. We have an action-packed weekend starting with uh, our ancestral dinner tonight, like Dr. Rick Wright said. I'm hoping you'll all join us over at the Commons starting at 6 o'clock. Tomorrow morning we will have our Visions of Victory Parade that will leave Dr. Martin Luther King's school at 12 o'clock headed into Jubilee Park where we will have uh, gospel music, soul, some jazz, R&B, everything you can think of as far as soul food will be down there. And uh, we actually have a fine addition to our festival this year. Mr. Walt Dixie and Jubilee Holmes will be hosting their first Showcase Sunday that will start on four o'clock, start at four o'clock on Sunday. So we're hoping that you can all join us. Again, thank you to the city of Syracuse and all that you do for us. And uh, that concludes our Juneteenth flag visit for today. Thank you very much, Kevin. Also to all the fathers out there, happy Father's Day. Happy Father's Day, all the fathers out there this morning. By the way, uh, Kenny Dees told me he checked with the uh, great leader in the sky, heaven, and Kenny promises us tomorrow will be a fantastic day of sunshine and great temperatures the whole weekend for Juneteenth and also for Father's Day. Well, ladies and gentlemen, it has been a pleasure. I'd like to thank all of you for coming out this morning. But one thing we must remember, that next year, as Mr. Kevin Henry indicated, it'll be the 150th, 150th celebration of Juneteenth. And of course, going back to 1865 in Texas, with all of the resources and the historical legacy that we have here in Syracuse, New York, 
and getting the entire community on board. We should make Syracuse, New York our challenge next year with regards to Juneteenth that the destination spot for Juneteenth will be Syracuse, New York. And we have all of the pieces of the puzzle. Let's put them together and let's put Syracuse on the map next year with the 150th celebration of Juneteenth for all of the world. And let's make our city the destination spot where people from all over the country will come here as we talk about Harriet Tubman, Bishop Jermaine Wesley Logan, Frederick Douglass, and of course, don't forget, the only monument, the only monument in the United States of America that has been dedicated to an escaped slave is where? Clinton Square, Syracuse, New York. If that's not enough ammunition, we need to just go home and go to sleep. Well, pleasure. And of course, tomorrow we'll see you. Ancestry dinner tonight and on Sunday. Mayor Miner and your great administration and Dan, your leadership in Washington and Dave, your leadership in Albany and all of our city leaders here. Helen is here, I see Van is here, our great common council president. Boy, we got some incredible, brilliant people here in Syracuse, and we can make it happen. And simply, I like to say all the time, it's showtime. Love you.